be the annual convention in Coeur d'Alene through at and I, and that's the affiliated tribes of the Northwest Indians, which the Crow tribe is a member of in good standing. That time, at that time, we pushed the resolution through. It was, um, it was kind of a difficult time for us, as I know Luke was there and he explained it all. We got that resolution pushed through, which basically was uh, was um, part of a, the bigger picture, and I was to take it to NCAI. And I arrived in um, Tulsa Sunday night, and right away we. There was different um, tribal leaders that we met with, and every every night went into every day went into the night, and there's tribal leaders that we continued to approach and talk with, and I know Dad was there and he was doing the same. All the all the official, elected officials that were there were doing the same, and Monday we. We went to the General Assembly and kind of getting to know their politics, figuring out how they do things. And of course, it's um, election year for the president and the vice president, the secretary, and the treasurer. And so um, we talked with different ones. We sat down with them, visited with them, let them know our concerns. And the Crow tribe were 180 votes. They have kind of an electoral vote um, deal that they have where the tribe, if they vote for a certain um, candidate, then that 180 votes will be conveyed to that candidate. And then it'll add up. Then, of course, there's the individual voting. <clears throat> I was a delegate, and Sean stayed back on the voting. Um, so we, we went ahead and we continued to to network and make our connections and in the meetings, the first meeting went through, there was questions, there was comments, Dale did a good job, he got up and did a presentation, <coughs> um, Chairman Okai was there, he did a presentation, spoke to the issues and when the question came about, there was question of, of um, you know, different things that you know, some people brought out questions about, you know, again, the traffic of the call and stuff like that as they, as they should. But a lot of that was already resolved in Coeur d'Alene. And it was pretty good because our the chairman of the Natural Resources, I, for, I, keep, I forgot his name, Dell probably understands who, you know, who's, who that guy was, but um, it was good the way he brought it out because he stated, he continued to bring it out that he said, I want to remind you, he said, AT&I, the affiliated tribes of the Northwest, 58 tribes already agreed to this. And they're the ones actually sponsoring this legislation that they're pushing through for support of the Crow tribe on the Code of Liquids pilot program. So with that, pretty much kind of squashed some of the opposition. So there was, there was a lot of, um, you know, there's different ones kind of whispering around in the back and there was still the threat of a, of a resolution that was still in committee to come out to kill export coal in general. But, you know, we, we didn't bother with that. We were just ready for things and we just kept pursuing the meetings. And the main meeting came about on Thursday. It passed, it passed committee and when it passed committee, we had, um, we had, we, well, we went into committee all those days. Thursday was the final committee. Um, no, Wednesday was the final committee, and I made the motion to pass, and it passed. We packaged it all together with several other. I've got those documents. I'll bring it in for, for our record. And we packaged together. I made the motion. It passed. So it passed the main committee, and it was going to go to the floor. Then again, something could bring come out again, because we were told by, um, does he still use Chief? Chief Gray? Chief Jim Gray? Big Jim? Osage? 
he talked to us. He said, you guys got to watch out. He said, this, this resolution that we had, he said, this individual, he was only a councilman, not even a president or a chief or chairman. He didn't agree to it. He voted no. He, he was not provided. Um, he didn't have to explain his no. But by him saying no, it, it overruled all the yes. So it held their, their resolution down. So they had to bring it to the floor, and which they did, which got passed. But the thing, the thing that you know, in in some in some circumstances it was easier. Yet it was kind of hard, because first of all, you know, we have different ones running for the presidency, and of course, um, the. Uh, Brian Cladisby of the Northwest Tribe, he won. And the Crow Tribe, you know, myself, Sean, we went and congratulated him, shook his hand, took a picture with him, and he asked us if his buffalo permit was still valid. He said, yeah, it's still valid. So I guess he missed his buffalo this year. But um, he told us he had, we had a friend there with him. But he did also state, I do have to stick up for what I believe in, he said. And I and I honor you for sticking up for what you believe in. This was on the side. <laughs> this wasn't on the record. But he basically told that to us. We shook his hand, congratulated him, and we thanked him for helping us in Coeur d'Alene. And that we continue to help him. And so, Brian Clasby is our new um, NCAI president. Vice president is um, Michael Finley. The secretary is um, Dennis Walsh. And um, treasurer is Robert Shepard. Do I have that mixed up? Either way, but those are your four for NCAI for this year. They've all showed support for the Crow Tribe. And the the three that I mentioned, Dennis Walsh, Mike Finley, and um, Robert Shepard, held a reception at the Regency. And it was a good time to network. A lot of people there, a lot of key people. So at that time, there was a lot of business going on. We were, we were working the room, basically. And so we're making sure that our, our interest was upheld. To make a long story short, it came to the floor. I was getting ready to make the motion. And we had three people in the middle. I don't know where they're from. Um, it, we can get it for the record. Um, they took the names, but they, they only took one motion. They jumped up and motioned for, to, say, to vote, yeah, vote yes on it. I made the motion to second on the floor, on the, in the General Assembly, and there, all the tribes are there. It's big. So for the record, I made the second, and when it came to the floor, before there was any opposition that was going to be brought out, the Chairman of the Natural Resources Committee made his report, and he stated the passages of everything, but one resolution he brought out and spoke to, expounded on, and that was ours. Again, he said, this resolution, affiliate tribes of the Northwest Indians, already voted on this. 58 tribes already support this. The tribes that first opposed it are supporting Crow on their endeavors. And so, They've already voted on this. In fact, they're the ones presenting this today, he said. So that calmed everything down. And when he brought that out again, when we made the motion, made the second, we got our vote, all in favor, say aye. Aye. 
passed. So it's as simple as that. As soon as I got it, I texted out, and it, it was a good day, you know. And that evening, we went ahead and we celebrated at the um, gala banquet with the other tribal leaders and with Brian Clasby. In fact, he bought the tickets for us. And so, it wasn't too bad. It, went, it worked out really well. And just wanted to let everyone know that this is not it. That we're going to be taking these support resolutions. It's going to say a lot on the Hill. I know Dallas already got some strategy behind the scenes that we're talking about with the chairman. Things are going to, things are going forward now that we have the, Trump, the, the support of all the tribes. And so we're getting closer and closer to this. And so I just wanted to bring that out. I know Dallas got some more to talk about. And with Navajo, although Navajo is not a member of NCAI, but I'll leave it up to him, Mr. Speaker Ho. Okay, at this time, I believe I'm going to hear, I want to hear from uh, Senator Alden and Senator Stoughton as well, too. Very good. I hope, Mr. Speaker, members of you behave yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'll just give a brief uh, overview of uh, my perspective. Uh, NCI, we've been wanting to attend for, I don't know, since I've been in office here. I finally got to uh, go this year, and it was eye opening. It's, uh, it was an experience, actually, because it's, uh, it's all elected officials across Indian country, plus their uh, legal teams. And then uh, us as a tribe going, we we kind of went as a team, but we were um, the legislative branch and the executive branch going as one, and just uh, our mission was to actually the CTL project. But on the other hand, we got to go out and um, I got to go out and kind of a uh, what do you call it networking exactly networking, meeting other uh, ter people and whatnot, <laughs> but, uh, elected officials. And uh, one one of the big things I got. NCI was eye opening. Was I sat in on a, um, one of the general assemblies one day when we first got there in uh, judicial? This is for maybe uh, Senator Marlin and uh, Senator uh, Leroy over there. Is uh, NCI gave out one big report was to um, message was to stay out of federal court as cross Indian country, stay out of federal court. That was one of the biggest things I took from that. Uh, General Assembly, and they gave a big old presentation on all the court case, and I got some paperwork that I'll give to you guys um, once I get that, but on some of the current court issues that are in Supreme Court or Ninth District Court and whatnot. But um, other than what CJ's report, like you said, we went there with a, one objective is the CTL, and, and it was um, to just learn the process of the NCAI. Is this pretty much like we do here, is our committee meetings. We break up in committee meetings and we uh, get it through there, and then it finally hits the main floor that last couple of days. But and then us guys pretty much trying to. I met a lot of a uh, lot of a. Uh, how'd you say it? Uh, no, not that. But uh, <laughs> keep people on uh, <laughs> the councils on other tribes that we got to. They had the 180 vote. We talked about the 180 vote, and we're um, getting off subject here, but <laughs> that's key to finding other tribes in their 180 vote. So, and uh, like CJ said, the tribe was uh, 180, and we had some other tribes that we knew that were 180. So getting out there, and networking with those guys, and trying to get that vote, pretty much, and it was a good experience. I don't know, actually. So. And I'm glad we all we came together as a tribe too. We were down there as a team. We weren't down there as two different branches or anything. We all represented the tribe in one goal. And it just That's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Good report. Senator Gerald Stork. Oh. Now I like it. Now N C A I. Oklahoma go out to make thirty one years ago at OU. Presentation today, Monday, on the 1014, Darren, Dale, and Rocco, the Michigas, Subishitio Committee, and Natural Resource Committee, 
Tuesday, 4 p.m. When are we open? YouTube and Nazi Okwa. We're gonna Wednesday get chick committee good. Food committee on Thursday. Okay, uh, CJ Sheila. We're going to General Assembly on ten eighteen Friday. Kajitu do. Bigale Veterans Committee. Bali. Paul Illight. We go Shilio. I know. Veterans Treatment Court. All that you hope. Great pro serve. Veterans Treatment Court coordinator all at Tulsa VA. Welcome. Get in touch with us. We can go up there and help you, or you guys can come down. And it's just again make bashi or go kukla. It's just a cut with you can, or a kajit to general assembly with them. Code of liquid soap to show. Make sure you. Oh. Okay. Thank you for the verbal report. It's just a shugi get out there. That's that's what I wanted to hear. I believe we need a. You know, and, and thanks, uh, Dale, that uh, it's been, uh, we needed to, we needed something like this for uh, the legislators, the senators to experience something like this, the bigger picture out there in Indian country. And it's quite, a, quite an experience, just like Senator Alden was saying that uh, <clears throat> he's been always wanting to go and the opportunity arose and he's there. But yet we still took care of business over here, you know, during October session, and I, and I applaud you guys. I think you guys deserve a round of applause from your fellow senators for doing a good job, great job. Oh, and based on that, they they have the midterms and then they have the union ones. So hopefully we can send a delegation, whether it's just a couple from here every time, and just be involved in the whole NCI because it's powerful. It's elected officials cross country. And like I said, it was an experience. Okay, go ahead, uh, Senator Stewart. <clears throat> There's one more thing that, um, like, you know, the, there's a different kind of politics there. And this different kind of politics that we're talking about, Indian country speaks. And if you're not involved, then, you know, you're on the side, you know, basically. And if we get, if the crows get involved, and utilize this, there's a lot of things that we can express through resolutions, through NCAI. Just like for the fact, the simple fact that right now, every tribal member that wears a war bonnet, that has bustles or whatever, that dances, right now, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, they, they profile you as a crook. They profile you as a as someone that's, you probably got that illegally. That's the way they see. I look at that as a, a stereotype and a form of discrimination against the Indian person. And that's something that I'd like to try to present through this tribe that we can pursue with the new, the new um, friends that we have out there. And I believe Indian country will support us because right now, with the amount of money that goes into that fishing, fishing wildlife, for the uh, vast amount of years that they spend, and then they come out with one outcome, one little feather, with all the money they spend, they go out on fishing trips, hunting trips, probably get drunk and act like they're all this and that, they're spending a lot of money out there. And all they do is come up with one little feather trying to prosecute and put people to prison. Our Indian people. But I think that we need to start looking at something like this, this new, this new um, way that, that, we, that we've seen. I think we need to present a resolution because that's a form of discrimination against the Indian country. And right now, if we don't pursue it, every time you go to powwows, every time you get ready for, for your um, parades, shoot, you're gonna be in question. We need to start thinking about things like this. Because right now, all we're doing is letting them determine and define. We need to step up and determine and define. We wore those feathers before these white men even came here. So those are something that I wanted to bring out, just to give notice to the body. Oh. Okay, thank you. Good to you. Uh, so with that, we're going to turn the floor over to uh, Legal Dale. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Um, 
members of the body, I'll try to, I'm not going to repeat any of the stuff you heard in the reports, other than to say it's, it's been great that one third of you now have gone off with executive officials and us advisors and see the world that we've got to live in and, and to navigate in order to establish and push our interests. And sometimes they're friendly and sometimes they're very unfriendly. And it, it just, it varies considerably. And this goes beyond just our deals with our energy partners, like the coal, they're about the bottom line. Okay, fine, does the bottom line work for you? Does it work for us? We cut the deal and we discuss the details. Then after that's all said and done, in order to make that a reality, we have to go everywhere else surrounding us in all the regions and nationally and say, we want our coal developed. And we already have many other people who have are established against us. So that's why we go to AT&I and say, you can't shut us down. We're sovereign, you may be sovereign, but you're not gonna tell us what to do with our coal. Three of the, three of the senators here experienced that firsthand. It wasn't pretty, I'll tell you that. And that was, the, that was the fifth meeting I've been in with those guys. And even though I helped them when I was at Interior on their salmon, on their protection funds, on environmental cleanup, on getting jurisdiction over their waters. All that is washed away when you're standing there arm in arm with other crows. They just tend to push it off and forget it. And it tells you how quickly things turn on a dime. So every now and then I have to remind them, when we had the chance, there were some of us in authority who helped you. So don't try to stop us from doing what we need to do. And that's what at and I was in. And I have to say, uh, Senator Stewart here in specific, has seen it from the very beginning all the way through to the final resolution in two different conventions. I, I can tell he's at a bit of a loss for words because you can't describe this in words, what you experienced. It's just like in a sweat or anything else or you go up to the mountain. Words will never describe what you've lived through. They never can. They're just a, um, a shortcoming and a medium to try to express what you've done. And Having to bounce around hundreds of people at at &I, the first round, and again, that's the fifth round for me, but having to bounce around thousands of people in Tulsa to try to navigate our way to get all of those tribal leaders to say in one voice, Crow, you should be the pilot project for coal to liquids in the United States. That's what we came up with. That's why it was important. It wasn't just a resolution. It was to say, we all agree, Crow should be the project for the United States. That's a pretty substantial statement to say that our place, our homeland, should be the one to partner up with Department of Defense, that we should access all the resources from Department of Energy and make this a reality and showcase what we can do to be America's partner in clean diesel and jet fuel. We can be a defense partner. So that's, that's kind of lesson number one out of all of that and why it was important. Um, and it was great to have a full Crow delegation because people come and go, and if you don't have people see it all the way through, everything we've done could just come unraveled at the very end. Just takes one objection from one council member out of tens of thousands of elected Indian folks. Just one has to say no. That's pretty tough to stop if you think about it. So you have to have a compelling case a way we think we're unique and we're best positioned. And if it hadn't been for all our fighting in the Northwest, they surely would have vetoed this. But the groundwork was laid for them to be satisfied. And the other thing about that resolution, not only for energy and defense, but remember that when the day comes when these guys who are working on water and the park and everything else, when they start digging the coal, and we start building a, ma a major plant. We're going to have environmental protesters surrounding us. But we're going to have these resolutions saying, hey, your friends from the Northwest, the ones you've teamed up with on everything else, they said it's okay. And then we just push that resolution right in their face. You get nothing to stand on now. You have no other tribes who can oppose us. We're, we're set. So we've laid the foundation, the groundwork, for that kind of project, and we know that's a huge mega project that costs lots of money. That's our what I would call our 10-year project, because it'll be 10 years before you see that thing where the ground goes in and it starts to operate. 
And you can imagine it would be of interest to not just here, Bighorn County, Yellowstone County, Rosebud County, that will have a ripple effect for the whole region and, and likely the United States. And in fact, let's not even leave it at the domestic borders because China is watching. China wants to now formally be our partner with Accelergy and others to develop this coal to liquids, which they have now deployed out there in the middle of the desert. So we know it's a reality and it's half a world away. So all these things do matter. They make a difference. Appreciate the commitment and the uh, and the, the teamwork. Really, it's been um, it takes a team to, to make something like that happen. So that's on the, the resolution side. ATNI, NCAI, coal to liquids. I would like to give you two other updates that I think are are noteworthy. Um, Navajo Nation. Yesterday, uh, we've been working with them for probably half a year after we cut the Claude Peak deal in Westmoreland last spring. They noticed we were doing this. Um, how many of you are familiar, with, maybe with a show of hands, that Navajo is trying to buy up all their coal mines within their home line? There's only a couple. They're trying to buy everybody out and just run it themselves. Well, it, assuming Navajo can do that, which I think they can, and Arizona, the state of Arizona is now playing politics with them, because they're trying to deregulate the utility industry, which is the one that's going to accept their coal. So then it fluctuates the price of everything and they can't buy the existing coal mines. I mention all of that because Navajo is in the same position as we are. And one thing we've learned is in this coal fight, I know crows used to go on it alone, which we will do if we have to, but man, it would be nice to have the largest Indian nation standing side by side with us in this fight. And they are, you know, the, the size of a large state. So they've got, you know, 50 agencies they've got to get okays with, and they're both their bodies, executive and legislative. Well, I'm here to tell you that as of yesterday, they sent me a resolution which I forwarded to the Chairman of Natural Resources and the Speaker. Um, they have a resolution of support that says, Crow and Navajo now will fight together to save coal. We'll fight together in Congress to get a permanent tax credit. We'll fight together to push back on EPA. And we'll fight together to even the playing field so we can continue to develop coal. That's going to be a just instrumental support because they're in four states. So they've got a delegation, four delegations they can reach. We've got Montana and Wyoming. We're going to have a large part of the West who's going to be now on notice that we're working together. And I can't tell you how important that is because they're not even part of NCAI. They think that they should have 2,000 votes, not 180. So they don't want anything to do with NCAI. So we're the ones left holding the bag in NCAI trying to do this. But then outside of NCAI, they're saying, now let's stand hand in hand. And they have now a formal resolution within their own governing body to go forward. And that's why I sent notice the second I got it and said, we could turn this into a, a joint action resolution from us. And then we have Crow and Navajo, all the elected leaders standing together, two of the largest tribes around. And I, I think we can hit the hill. We're going to go where the, the president's going to meet with tribal leaders for the fifth time on November 13th in Washington, D.C. He's going to have all his cabinet heads there. And Chairman Old Coyote can stand there with this resolution, as will Navajo, and they can tell everybody, stop your war on coal. No more. The war on coal is a war on us. And if we can put that from all of the elected leaders, I think that says a lot. And I think it'll go a long way. So that's, that's another thing that, that recently transpired. A third thing that I think is, is noteworthy, on our uh, coal production tax credit, We've, we've done reports before. We've got two allies, Rockefeller out of West Virginia and Bacchus. Both are going to retire in 14 months. Nobody else seems to have the appetite to want to make our tax credit permanent. That's why I think Navajo feels compelled to go forward now with us. Uh, and Hopi, by the way, is extremely supportive, and they'll do a resolution as well. So we'll have an Indian coal coalition uh, a few of us tribes that produce and depend on it today. Well, I'm here to tell you that 
next week in Boulder, Colorado, a few of us are going to be going down there, and um, Harvard Project is now going to do a economic study on our coal mining, what it's meant to the region, and they're going to have a benefit cost benefit analysis of our tax credit. And our partners, Cloud Peak and Westmoreland, are going to basically pay for 95% of it. So when we stand up on the hill and then we say, we've already got a resolution on the pilot project for America called the liquids. We've got now the largest Indian nation standing side by side with us saying, we're going to develop coal and we want you to stop attacking us. And the third, we've got one of the most prestigious universities, Harvard, saying their coal means everything to them. Our stamp of approval is on that. And yes, Congress, you should enact that permanently. Those are all things that take a lot of time to get done. But they're all things that are now slowly building in our favor and creating momentum, in my mind. And I think a number of people, and, and I think the senator saw it when either we'd walk up and down the convention or we'd be in committee or anywhere else, a lot of people are watching what we're doing. A lot of people want to support us. And we just haven't, well, now we're coming together with things that they can support us on. Projects, jobs, pilot projects, assistance, financial and technical. Now we know what to say. This is what we want. This is what we'd like to have. So that's um, kind of the larger, bigger energy picture out of all of this. And uh, we're still waiting for Great Northern to get back to us formally. They apparently had some internal budget meetings with the family. I think, um, again, a group went down there when um, Corbin Robertson, uh, the owner of, of you know 12 companies that has billions of dollars in play all over the place. Uh, we're still waiting for them to lock down a non-disclosure agreement and uh, waiting any day to hear from them on, on that side. So we have a development partner with Accelergy and, and Rocco7 um, to help us out, the chief scientist. The last thing I'll say is, and this is tomorrow, and chairman of the gaming committee, Real Bird, here is going to be playing a big role as the state of Montana has sent their budget director, deputy chief of staff, and, and uh, governor's head lawyer to meet over here across the street at Little Bighorn to finalize our compact, the one I've been talking about forever that I am so frustrated with, I cannot even begin to tell you. But the reason they're coming here is because we said we've exhausted everything we can, and, and a number of folks have been in these meetings, and they, we've given updates. And I told them, if you guys are serious, you'll send your top people down to Crow to try to get this done. And so tomorrow, hopefully, will be a good day where we can announce that we've got that compact done. Um, and, and Brian Newland just uh, dropped into town. He's in Billings now. And uh, we'll be meeting tomorrow at 10 o'clock for those in the gaming committee over at Little Bighorn in the, in the library. 10 a.m. we're going to have a pre-meeting, and then we're going to start negotiations at 1 p.m. with all of them on uh, the final part. So we'll get everyone up to speed. We'll go over what's been negotiated. I've sent charts around for folks. I've sent uh, all the different drafts that have come through with the, the red lines. And again, in, in a measure of transparency, I want everyone to see what we're seeing so you guys know exactly what we're trying to negotiate what we're trying to get done. Um, and with that, uh, I think those are enough updates. I hope. All right. Um, thank you, uh, Dale. Uh, I want to say a few words on behalf of Dale that diligently to, uh, you know, strategizing, you know, tactfully on how to get this economic development not only that, I, I see that uh, the NCAI back to ATNI, you know, what I seen was, you know, as the leadership, when you sit there, the lawyers are sitting, they did the, the, the groundwork, they did the technical groundwork and then they tell the leadership share the leadership this is what you need to say and so we as leadership you know we, we you know we say what needs to needs to be said and may I get NCAI is a whole different animal <laughs> bigger and see this is what I'm trying to you guys are leaders the leaders could do the 
Kadagoi she wa guy. Don't think small. Hey, kiragi wai la ga. Koe a mahal a cutbook. Speech, speaking. Mahal a cutbook. You need to do that. That's why when I sat here, I said, we're going to develop. My, my job is to develop you guys to a higher standard. Koi, absentism, kadetic, it's important. I harp on that. Again, if you think small, you're going to stay small. But if you think big, that's what he's talking about. You know, and I appreciate, you know, I see the vision. I see the big picture for the whole crow people. But it takes a team, like he said. It takes the branches to come together and move forward. And be a walk you, Coke. So that's why, I mean, apply yourself. If I sit here, I'm going to harp on you. Apply yourself. Apply yourself. Keep applying. Read. Learn. Come to this level. He's trying to get us to this level and let us see. If you come to this level, you can see the whole picture, actually. <laughs> If you stay down here, you're going to see what's in front of you. That's all. Step up. That's what stepping up means. When you step up to that level, then you can see the whole picture. Then you can see where the direction of the wind. You're talking about spirit, spiritual. If you catch that wind, you're going to go there in that direction when you see the whole picture. You... If you want to stay at this level, you're not going. You're going to see what you're going to see a lot of negativity. But if you pray and move forward, you're going to see the whole picture. You, and I want. We need to give them. Uh, an applause for your hard work. A whole. That was a great report. A whole. Thank you for your hard work and your diligence. Okay. Okay, uh, Senator Stewart. I just want to <clears throat> remind the body that we do have uh, this resolution in the format of the, the Navajo Nation. We need to get it in the format of the, the Crow Nation under our joint action resolution. If we get that submitted at the earliest, say today, by the end of business day, we can have our um, special session on the 8th. And that would be something that would be good to have in hand for the White House meeting on the 13th. And I think that's what we're kind of shooting for all these different um, um, milestones that are leading up to this point that it's um, it'd be good to have. So with that being said, I want to mention that to the officers of the branch that we kind of want to look at. Um, did, did Jay already get a copy of that? You got, is he work, working on that? No? Yeah. So if we can get something put together, um, I believe um, there and still around, we can get something signed, delivered, and hopefully exhaust our 15-day requirement and have something ready by special session for November 8th. Yeah, it's a Friday, November 8th. That's the week of the tarot conference in Vegas. It could be, or we could have, the 13th is on the Wednesday, we could easily have it on that 11th, I don't think these guys are flying out till when, the 13th, early morning, there, the 12th. So that'll be the Tuesday. Yeah, so. We have a special session on the 11th. The 11th or early morning, 12th, depends on when the when the flights are. I don't know who's all going to go. Uh, 11th is a... Uh, that's the Veterans Day. November 11th. Okay. 
uh, we'll co coordinate that somehow on the joint action resolution. Uh, can you repeat that again? We'll have to get a joint action resolution put together to um, submit to meet the requirement of the 15 days and possibly have a special session on the 11th or the 12th, depending on when these guys, you know, who, who's all flying out for that. I know there's going to be a, it's going to be a big meeting. I believe um, we're going to be introduced to the um, Secretary of Energy, Moniz, is that his name? Moniz. And he's very in favor of the Code of Liquids, which really looks promising for the crew tribes. So if there was late night, like say 5 o'clock, flights out, I know no one likes to take those kind of flights, but I think this is important. Okay, uh, we'll look into that uh, with uh, Jay and uh, Secretary Okro, and that would be the natural resources, right? Okay, we will surely do that, not forget it. So, okay, any more? Uh, any more additionals or anything? <clears throat> you know, I get several things. I'm going to make an announcement, but I need a an executive session with the body while you guys are here and you know,